When you're rolling, do this and tell me you're rolling like you do. I think that's great. Um, we've been rolling. Oh, that's, that's great. <laughs> All right, I'm Pat Clark. This here is the Guy Asuda Fellowship Program in Video. Um, and I want to start this week's show by uh, um, allowing our kind hosts here at the Waffle Shop, Pittsburgh Zone, East Liberty Zone, Waffle Shop, to tell us what's up with the, the Waffle Shop. You want to come on video? Sure. Come on. Sure. Introduce yourself. Hello. Uh, I'm Don Molesky. I'm the Assistant Director of the Waffle Shop. Thank you, thank you. So, um, just wanted to tell you a quick brief note about the Waffle Shop. The Waffle Shop uh, started as an art class and students at Carnegie Mellon University under the direction of John Rubin, who has a class called the Storefront Project, created this whole concept as a means to document the people um, of the area and the kind of changes that are happening in the area and created this sort of interactive talk show stage that acts to do that. Um, and is kind of a participatory model for uh, people participating in the, their own artwork, so not just documenting people as an interview, um, but having them interview themselves, interview other people, have their own shows, just talk to Mike here, he's interested in doing some, some sort of karaoke thing here. Um, and so we have people coming to us uh, doing their own talk shows, their own musical shows with um, wild concepts. So, uh, and we do serve waffles and that helps to um, find all of our creative things going on here. We also have a billboard on top of the building that acts to tell stories uh, from around the world so anyone can submit something to put onto the changeable tech system on the billboard. We also have a new project we're doing called the Conflict Kitchen out of our storefront, um, out of our kitchen, which we're serving cuisine from countries we're in conflict with. We're starting with Iran. And, uh, and so I just wanted to invite everyone here that if you have a talk show idea or a show idea or uh, you just want to rent this out as a venue, uh, which again, all of that money goes back into the creative things that are going on here at the Waffle Shop, please, uh, you can contact me at dawn at waffleshop.org and uh, stop by for waffles some night. We're open Fridays and Saturdays from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. and it's a pretty interesting time and also Saturdays and Sundays for brunch 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Check us out at waffleshop.org where you can see the show streaming live. Thank you very much. Pat, I want to thank you, Don. Highly trained technical staff. It's making midstream adjustments. Problem we face. All right, we're trying it for signal now. We're signaled. All right, now the exciting part of our show, where I, where I come from behind the counter. Thank you, Don. I've just got to say, of course, Don, go away. I'm no good for you. Ah, uh, this is just great. I love having a talk show sh shows at this format. Uh, if only to amuse myself. All right, so tonight, on Guy Suda Fellowship Program, tonight's suggested agenda, welcome, introductions. I'm gonna slide review of the previous one back because uh, our first, uh, uh, first uh, uh, expert has uh, gotta get out of here and do some actual work um, back at the home uh, front there at the Kingsley Association. So we'll go through the speaker's presentations, go through questions and add on this topic, and then uh, move on from there. Uh, to summary and talk about the next sessions. So first guy, first gentleman, Fred Brown from the Kingsley Association. Uh, Fred, welcome to the Waffle Shop. And the guy is here to nice to be here. Uh, uh, Fellowship for Public Policy. I want some of the waffles though. It's all right, well, we're, we're talking about the waffles is later. Is the waffle shop open right now? No. Uh, so, but we'll talk about that, because we gotta at some point like start laying out what the actual policy is and I was thinking bowling or waffles, or maybe both. Oh. I, that's what I had in mind. All right, so anyways, Fred's with the Kingsley Association. I, I've asked Fred to kick off the discussion about uh, uh, the intersection of green plus equity as part of the session tonight. 
uh, and uh, uh, Fred's uh, uh, been been doing some good good stuff with the uh, green economy and, and uh, doing it uh, actually community based, working out of Kingsley Association. So, um, Fred Brown, bring it home. Well, Pat, thanks for inviting me in and in, uh, Kingsley organization on and on behalf of Malik Bankston, our executive director. I bid everybody a welcome. Thank you for uh, having us. Um, as you know, the Kingsley organization is a 116-year-old organization that's been operating in the city of Pittsburgh. And for its 116 years, it's been very innovative with dealing with cutting-edge technology and bringing that stuff to at-risk populations. Our core focus is education, health and wellness, and community sustainability. So I'm recently on board as of January um, 09. Uh, coming up will be my one-year anniversary of returning back to Pittsburgh. I've been very blessed in my position as the associate director and tasked with this effort, one of our next legs, which is uh, focused on community sustainability. In that regard, we've been focusing on this notion of green technology, green collar economy, most of which is emerging out of the Van Jones Vanguard focus in conjunction with some of the our resources, stimulation monies, and things like that. As you know, the Larma area is a blighted community that at one time had 30,000 homes in it, and now has an active population of about 27 houses, 27,000, 100 houses. So we went from 30,000 to 2,700. Um, it definitely is a community that's been blighted. So our effort has been, how do we engage this community and green technology efforts that can have them bridge the 21st century divide with bringing their skill sets up, up to par with some of the uh, ecosystems that's emerging out of this green economy. So we've hosted a series of events and about seven or eight months ago, we started a group called the Urban Green Growth Collaborative. And the UGGC's focus is really to look at what we would call low hanging fruit in and around the East Liberty Larmer area and try to figure out how these resources could be tapped in partnership to provide sustainable job opportunities to average populations with a focus on green. To this end, there has been numerous opportunities brought to our, our doorstep for partnership or events. One of the things that we've really been focusing on as an organization is not engaging in event activity, but more so in partnerships. And I'll define that in this light. A lot of times I get phone calls to come do something or to speak somewhere. And for me, that's nice. But in the long term, how can my relationship and my position create a paradigm shift in how other organizations and people interface with the people we work with and serve? So for me, I'm more interested in partnerships because one of the things that we're trying to arrest is the trauma that's created when people who have good ideas and good intentions come into the community um, attempt to execute something that they think is a good thing, do not get a lot of community buy-in, leave with an attitude and feel like the community wasn't supportive of their idea, and the community feels like they got stiffed in the process. In many of these activities, people do not depart um, any transferable skill, any knowledge base, who's the contact person to execute this particular task, and things like that. So my 27, 28 year history working in Pittsburgh has led me to believe that we need to create a bridge. A bridge that div uh, bridges the chasm or divide between um, what I would call middle class values around uh, this weatherization notion that's being emerged in the at-risk populations who need this skill set to rise with the green tide, as Van Jones would put it. For me, there's a, a, a real succinct succinct issue that we need to come to grips with, which, which is all of these notions about bringing these people up to, to speed denotes that they have a level of skills that allow them to emerge into this economy unscathed. And I think that that's a misnomer. I think that that's a, a short-sighted perspective. We're talking about people that are at risk and